Hi, it's Mike from Pro Tools Expert, and we've had a little bit of controversy recently about the dropping of the time compression expansion option in the trim tool uh, in Pro Tools 11. Uh, so that mode doesn't have the option to use the old DigiDesign time compression expansion algorithm, which for speech was really good. So here we go, here's the original. Where Paul Robeson, uh, he sang, he gave concerts, uh, but during the... If we have a listen now to the time compression expansion one that I did in Pro Tools 10, I'm running Pro Tools 11 here. Where Paul Robeson, uh, he sang, he gave concerts, uh, but... Do and that sounds absolutely fine. So if we now have a listen to the time shift version, which of course is the only option we have in Pro Tools 11. Where Paul Robeson, he sang, he gave concerts. Uh, you can hear that we've got artifacts. So since I did the first video, I've been asked if Elastic Audio would provide an alternative solution or whether that would have the same side effects as time shift. And so I took a listen and I think it has great promise as certainly a potential workaround whilst we uh, wait for Avid to put the time compression expansion back into Pro Tools 11. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing we need to do is to make the track Elastic Audio enabled. So we click on here and go into Polyphonic. I've already done this with this track, but sometimes you'll just have to wait a few moments. You'll see that the waveform is greyed out and then eventually it'll come back good. And at that point, Pro Tools has analysed all the audio on that track and is in a position to be able to use it on Elastic Audio. So here with Elastic Audio, we go into Analysis and of course you'll see that there are a whole load of analysis markers here, none of which are going to be any real use to us because we only want to be able to shorten the whole thing. So the first thing to do is to highlight over the whole lot, hit the delete key. And so now we have no analysis markers. So I'm going to zoom in and close to the beginning of the region, I'm going to add a single event marker. And then I'm going to go to the end and do the same, click and put in another event marker. So now I just have event markers, one at the beginning and one at the end. So now what we need to do is to go into warp mode. Now when I get the cursor close, you can see that it picks up that event marker. And now I can drag and bring in this clip so that it's the same length as all the others. So I've reduced it in time by the same amount. So back into normal waveform. And now let's just play that, see what it sounds like. Where Paul Robeson, uh, he sang, he gave concerts, uh, but during the day it was a gymnasium for rehabilitation. So if we compare that with the DigiDesign time compression expansion algorithm. Where Paul Robeson, uh, he sang, he gave concerts, uh, but during the day it was a gymnasium for rehabilitation. So you can hear that that really is very, very Where good. Paul Robeson, uh, he sang, he gave concerts, uh, but during the day it was a gymnasium for rehabilitation for the patient. So it's a bit of a pain to have to go in and clear out all the warp markers, but it, it can be done quite easily. You just see me highlight over them all and clear them out and then put in a warp marker at the beginning and at the end of the area that I want to time compress and expand. In this case, time compress, and there it is, it's done. So I think it's going to be a very useful workaround, certainly in the short term. And I know of a number of dialogue editors who actually swear by Elastic Audio as their normal workflow to time stretch or compress audio to fit it with the original audio.